Dude. What's going on guys? Aaron from Top Chip Gaming here and today we have a top 4 deck profile for Dragon Maids. Uh, me and my friends went down to Alexandria this past weekend to play in a Battle of Chaos case tournament. Um, it was a pretty cool tournament. There wasn't like that many players, but it was really concentrated with a lot of good players. So a lot of my rounds were against like pretty competent opponents and I had some really tough matchups, but we were able to top 4 with the Dragon Maid deck, so super exciting. I think this is like my third Dragon Maid profile in the last month or so. Uh, but yeah, I just love profiling this deck. It's a strategy I really enjoy. So yeah, let's get into this profile. Alright guys, starting off, we're going to have the obligatory 3 chamber. Uh, definitely your best starter in the deck. Sort of paired off with the 3 parlor. Uh, these are the, the 6 you have to play and maximize out because they are your best starters. Um, they're both like normal summons and you don't want to draw a lot of normal summons, but they do work together. Like if you draw parlor and chamber, it's just full combo. Uh, because you parlor dump tidying special the chamber and you get your spheres tidying which is just as we know it the ftk definitely the board you're trying to end up with um and yeah these are just the ones you want to maximize on we don't have as many starters as we'd like so we're going to play more cards that sort of uh maximize our chance to see these six cards and yeah then we have the one kitchen and the one nurse uh kitchen was a lot less good this weekend in this profile because uh, in my last list I uploaded, there was an extra dragon that makes Kitchen have another use. But she was pretty underwhelming this event as she like normally is. She's great with the two card combo with Hospitality, where she's just super good at getting your full board because you can just add Chamber, Dump Chamber, and then Hospitality her out. Um, but yeah, we didn't draw Kitchen like at all, and we didn't summon her often either. So she really underperformed this event, but you do have to play the one for the grind game. And of course Nurse is here for your spheres and just getting additional bodies. Um, and it just helps your snowball sort of start rolling a lot faster. For the big dragons, we have the one Ernest and the one Lorepar. So I'm normally playing Tenkek in this lineup, but I decided to cut it. Uh, when I'm usually doing the profiles for my more local meta, uh, I, I need like less flex spots and I, I, like I know what's at my locals and what I need to prepare for, but I wanted to like maximize the good cards in this list for this event. So Tenkek, you know, he's a great card and he really helps you like out the matchups versus towers desks or decks like adding Mister. Um, but I wasn't really expecting that and at the end of the day I wanted to add good cards and less bricks. So I cut one of the dragons and Tenkek never came up so I did have pretty good luck with just the two. Going forward I don't know if I'd add Tenkek back in. It sort of depends on the meta and what's like popular at the time but the two dragons worked really well so we were just on 10 dragon made monsters which is a little less than I normally play because sometimes I also play two kitchen. Um, but yeah the big dragons did exactly what they needed to do which was make your Sheo and of course I'll make your grind game just that much better. To Nocto Vision, Nocto is just one of the best extenders in the deck and really helps it play around really devastating hand traps like Chamber getting impermed or Veilard or Ashed is almost enough to stop your plays in some really bad hands. So Noctovision is a good way to just like make one of your bridge links in the extra deck being either Pisty or uh, Striker and then special Nocto and you still get seals plus a draw. He also protects your back row which is really important to note because Draco backs a really big card this format and they quite often go for your back row so Noctovision can protect it from being bounced so saves your tidying or called by or whatever face down you have like droplets. Um, so yeah, Nocto is just one of the greatest cards in the deck, and he also is super good with Small World that I will get on to later. Uh, he, he's a really important bridge for a lot of things, be having zero attack and being a dragon. So two Nocto, sometimes I consider three, but in this list, again, I just wanted more flex spots. And then new to this list is one Black Metal and one Red MD. I don't play this often, but there was a couple of changes I made, like taking out the Tin Kek, which I felt allowed me to play the Red MD because it's essentially the same amount of big dragons. Um, the Black Metal adds an additional starter, and having both of these is just really nice if you draw this. And drawing Red MD by himself is also pretty good because the same way Noctovision uh, works as an extender, you can take your chamber or your parlor, turn them into one of your bridge links like Striker Dragon, banish that, bring back the Dragon Maid. Um, and yeah, it still uh, seals. Black Metal, again, another normal summon, but the way this normal summon works allows you to get more of your normal summons out of your hands because you just go grab the Red MD and then special the Parlor or the Chamber from your hand. So it's still full combo if you're able to add tidying as well. Um, the reason the ratios look like this, this is sort of like awkward uh, because a lot of decks that are on Black Metal either tend to max them out or in some lists they'll still play one. Uh, my logic was I just literally never wanted to see more than one of this card ever. 
Uh, and it also has some interesting applications as a small world bridge as well. So this package worked out really well and I often used it as an easy way to get side deck cards for game two and three. Especially go second, I'll just side both of these out for cards that actually break boards and allow me to play. On to hand traps. Uh, we definitely played a lot for this event, more than even in my last list. Uh, they're just great small world bridges and some of them are just really important for the deck in general. We have the two Ash Blossom, two Ghost Ogre, and two Bell. Uh, so six Ghost Girls, and they all sort of perform different roles. Uh, Ogre is of course very good versus the Brave engine that is just running around right now. Uh, Ash is generically like okay, it's not great versus Phantom Knight at all, but some like rogue strategies or uh, weaker hands for other decks it's really good and of course versus the eldritch matchup this card is absolutely insane uh, and bell is also really good for eldritch it's good against prank kids but more importantly bell is more of a defensive card in my deck for like my opponent's defensive cards like this is really good at stopping things like called by the grave and dd crow that shut down your spheres very hard of course called by the grave being you know enemy number one it also stops things like Ice Dragon's Prison that are just very good against Dragon decks in general. So Bell was more of a defensive tool there and still an amazing bridge for Small World just the same. Uh, so I wanted to play six Ghost Girl Hand Traps and they're all good in different situations. So just ran two of each rather than maxing out any one of them. Two Phantasmae. This card is super good in Dragon Maid because it is a level five or higher dragon. So even in the matchups where he's not great, you can still use him as a target for your changeover to make your Sheo. Um, but in matchups where he is really good, he's just phenomenal at drawing all your other hand traps or making sure you see your plays, as well as being like a, just a dragon extender on board that you can make seals with. Also a great small world bridge because he has 1800 defense, which means he matches up to any ghost girl hand trap except for cherries, which we are not running. Um, so being able to like draw Phantasme, bridge into a ghost girl and then add chamber because they all match up at 1800 defense is really really good and Phantasme was fantastic all day because I just also happened to play against a lot of matchups where he could really shine and of course one of the big things we're running with Phantasme is three Nibiru. Personally every time I run Phantasme Nibiru is a card I really want to run alongside of him because Nibiru is just one of the most impactful hand traps ever. Um, he's also good with small world if you open him you can bridge into your um, Ghost Ogre which brings it into Chamber and yeah Nibiru I think is really powerful in Dragon Maid or any deck honestly with seals as an end board because there's a lot of ways you can like use seals in with interactions with Nibiru like you can chain link one seals chain link to uh, Nibiru um, blow their board and then special the token and then seals is going to bounce the token and then you're going to special your follow-up anyways there's also times where you like nib your opponent when they went first and then you make seals on your next turn and there's really interesting interactions where you can like bounce your own Nibiru, which they're not expecting, and then you can drop it again. And it comes up every now and then, but Nibiru is just a very strong card for this deck overall and something I wanted to maximize at three and definitely came in clutch all event. On to the spell lineup, we have the three prosperity, just a way to, you know, make sure we see our starters. Again, we only have like seven one card starters in the one black metal and the three parlor and three chamber. Uh, so maximizing on a card that helps us see them is important. It does have a really terrible interaction with Noctovision. Like I've, I drew this off Noctovision like twice, which is just unfortunate. Um, but yeah, th that's like the only confliction it really has. And then we're on two small world, been mentioning this all profile. It's just a way, again, to see our starters because we only have seven naturally. Small world makes it nine. Uh, of course, a lot of those cards have two card combos. So it, you can find like a play very, very easily. But as far as one card starters, we wanted to maximize it with two Small World through Prosperity. I'm not maximizing Small World for space, and as well, there's just a lot of times you draw it when you already have everything you need. Uh, if you draw too many starters, you can search a hand trap, which is nice, but drawing multiples in this deck, it, it was just a killer in testing, so I wanted to drop this back down to two, and it definitely worked out, so. Three Hospitality and one Changeover. So this is sort of like just the standard dragon made ratio i've had lists with two changeover the last list i took to locals and uh, got first place with was on two changeover and that's because my locals is on dd crow because everyone at my locals kind of knows it's one of the best cards in the format but i've seen recently like a lot of people aren't on crow in the same way so i was just like risking the changeover if it got crowed unfortunate there's still other ways to do plays but uh it never got crowed it never got banished so changeover was doing fine um, there's oftentimes you can choose to side a second one when you know your opponent's on Crow, but I chose not to do that for this event. And three hospitality is just like one of the best extenders the deck has. 
it does require you to see a dragon made card so it can help your or it can actually make your bad hands worse but this card is just like sort of an engine requirement that you have to play at three um it's just too powerful not to so we are playing three hospitality and one changeover we're on two droplet and one called by the grave uh, if i had a third droplet i might play it for something but i actually just only own two and didn't borrow a third one um you could also just go to 41 and play the third droplet if you have access to it uh but yeah this is really good for breaking boards and called by just one of the best cards in the game so not much to say there and then lastly we are on three tidying which is just you know very important for dragon made engine requirement and obligatory three of all right on to the extra deck we are on the three heretic seals i've had a couple of list tests with two of this but yeah i think this is just one of the most powerful cards in the deck something i definitely wanted to maximize on i don't believe the third one actually came up unless i chose to banish one off prosperity oh i actually made three once against an opponent um i don't know how much it mattered that game i'm kind of blanking on it but yeah it, it, was, it was just overall good to play three it, it comes up every now and then and i didn't think there was a spot i wanted to play over the third one then we are on the one striker and one pisty so i get questions all the time what these cards are for and like all of my deck profiles so it's it, they're pretty much bridges obviously we're not on boot sector launch uh in the deck and that's why i guess striker gets asked about like questions about all the time but essentially these allow your one card starters to be one card starters because you link your chamber off into striker dragon after searching hospitality activate the hospitality and then link with the striker for seals it's very simple and once you get it it makes a lot of sense but i get questions about it all the time but that is why we are on the link ones next up a small little package we played was the one dark the one unicorn and the one access code uh, this came up in testing the Friday tournament before the event, but I didn't make any, well that's not true, I, I made the dark once or twice, but I didn't go into like the full access code package once, which is strange because it was coming up before, but dark is really nice in this deck because you're like Chamber's dark and she comes on the board all the time, uh, Noctovision's dark, the Red Eyes metal stuff is dark, so it's a pretty easy package to extend and actually put some damage on board and apply like a card that can blow up boards in access code. Next up, the two Sheo and the two House, sort of, you know, just requirements. I was thinking about playing a third House, and it's something I might think of in the future, um, because House is just very important, because how many House you have in your extra deck determines how useful Sheo is the longer the game goes on. Uh, and of course, sometimes you actually just want to hard make House to, like, pop boards. So, three House is an option, but I don't have space for this event. And then we are playing the Starving Venom, the Mud the mud dragon and the rocket ride so we are side decking super poly and this came up so many times today because of my matchup so it was very very good for the side deck we are on the pancratops um just obviously a, a staple for many side decks but i also wanted just good like blowout cards we could find off prosperity or even small world with the pancratops uh three lancia this is just very good versus pk that's running around just has a lot of good matchups versus anything on brave um i'm not really worried about getting evenly matched so it's not really for that but again phantom knights was enemy number one and then a really cool card that i wasn't playing the friday before when i was testing but i added in later is the two ghost sister and spooky dogwood this actually won me like two games and that's hilarious uh like, I sided this in with, like, 30 minutes left on the clock against a Sword Soul player, so it wasn't even, like, just for time, which I'll explain more about this card as far as time is concerned. Um, well, it wasn't really Sword Soul, it was the Kitchen Sink deck, and he put me at 24,000 life points, which allowed me to just, like, snowball and win the game. Um, but yeah, Dragon Maid has this very big issue where people don't realize when they've lost, uh, because if they don't realize they're caught in like dragon maid snowball and that it's almost impossible for the comeback they will keep playing and dragon maid has a very hard time actually dealing damage or getting kill shots unless you open super super well so oftentimes it'd be going into game three with you know under 10 minutes and dogwood searchable off like prosperity or small world so i was like if i can set up a board and have this if my opponent was just like taking so long to realize they've lost this can help me not sort of fall into their trap of losing in time because again i don't deal damage very quickly so dogwood was interesting and since she has 1800 defense she's a small world target same as the other ghost girls next up three super poly this card was amazing all weekend because i did play like two phantom knight and this card is insane versus them because you just shotgun it in draw phase and sort of stop scythe from messing with you uh, and also starving venom on field is a great extender for changeover or just making spheres um 
And I didn't play any prank kids. I do have the rocket ride in the extra deck as well, but it didn't come up. This only came up for Starving Venom, but it was still just a pretty good go second card overall. And it works with your engine in general, so you can like use it in battle phase to make Shao and just get extra damage. Uh, then one Duster and two Twin Twister. Uh, twins were just like for Eldritch and Prank Kids. Uh, no Cosmic. I wasn't as afraid of Scythe as, in this deck as I am in something like Evil Twin. Um, so I didn't run the Cosmic. I just wanted something a little higher impact. So I just ran Twin Twister. And it can also discard Tidying, which comes up a lot to actually just get extra extending into your opponent's board. And then three evenly matched because, again, most people don't side Lancia in against me because it doesn't make much sense. Uh, so evenly match is just free and it's just one of the best blowout go second cards of the format. Alright, so just to go over my matchups pretty briefly, uh, I sort of ran the Alexandria Ringer uh, round one and two. So two of Alexandria's best players, uh, Dylan and Trevor, uh, both good friends, and I played against them round one and two. Round one I play against Dylan on the Phantom Knight deck and it's a 2-0 game one. It went like he just played into a Nibiru. He told me he really wasn't expecting anyone to be main decking it, which fair enough with Brave sort of running around. I think less people are on Nibiru in general. Uh, so he played into Nibiru and it was a pretty easy win from there. And then game two, uh, I just like, I believe I super polyed him in game two. Um, but I do remember 2 0 him. He sort of had a couple of misplays, he said. Uh, and yeah, that's sort of how round two, one went. And then. Round two, I play against Trevor, who is on the Cyburst Eldritch deck, which is a really cool variation of Eldritch. It can do a lot of things. Uh, but it was also really tough to side deck in that matchup because his Cyburst stuff really wants you to have cards in like Nibiru and Droplets. Uh, but his Eldritch stuff definitely doesn't want you to have those cards in the main deck. So siding was really tough that matchup. I do end up picking it up. I remember Nibiru being super clutch in that game again. So Nibiru already just like proving itself round one and two, like in this deck to be a very powerful card. Uh, definitely won me those games as well as just Dragon Maid having a great time versus Eldritch in general. If you're really big into Master Duel, it's like actually seen as like an Eldritch counter. And yeah, it's pretty good versus Eldritch overall. So that matchup is one I kind of expected to win. Round three, I guess, played against my friend Levi, who actually got first in Swiss, I got second in Swiss, and he was on Dinosaurs, and I, I didn't really know much about the matchup going into it, because I don't think it's one we've played very often, maybe a couple of times. Uh, game one, I have a pretty weak opening, and I get Gammud, and that's just sort of it for that game. Uh, we opened triple tidying, so that was tough. It was three tidying, parlor, chamber, so one Gamma is shutting that down, and the three traps in our hand are also not interrupt, so that game was tough. Round two, I believe Levi sort of opened a hand where his Overraptor just really needed to resolve. And uh, I got like bounced once and then, or it got something happened to it once and then it got Shao'd on the following turn and he couldn't find a recovery play from there. And then game three, I made a pretty egregious misplay sort of on my second turn of the game. He set up a board that was Omega to put the Misk back into his graveyard and uh, Overtex. And I drop it in draw phase, pitching one to hit the Omega. I have a Nibiru on the field because I Nibiru'd a small part of his Griffin package on my first turn. Uh, so I have Nib, and I only drop it the Omega to stop Mist going back because I know it kills a lot of his follow up. And my plan is to Nibiru over the Overtech so he also doesn't search Pill. And then I make plays from there. I know he has a face down summon limit, but if I can get him to flip that up while I'm in a pretty good position, it can actually hurt him as well, especially if he didn't get the pill off the overtex. So I'm, I'm sort of thinking that as my line of thought. And then I think about something else, go back to it, and I just activate prosperity, which allows him to activate his overtex and search pill, which just threw that plan out the window, and we took a very swift L from there. So yeah, that is my only loss for the day. Uh, round four, I played against Trap Eldlich. It sort of went very similar to the game with uh, Trevor. However, this one's a little easier to side against because he doesn't have the cyber stuff to go with it. Game one was pretty tough because he opened Punishment, Ice Dragons, uh, the, a Sanguine, a Conquistador, and a Torrential. And it, it's just really hard to play through all of that and actually get anything rolling. So that game was tough, but we did pick that game up to one. And then round five, what did I play against round five? I don't even remember what I played against round five. I, it, oh wait no, it was another PK. I played against Clay, who's a good player from Monroe. He was on Phantom Knights and Super Poly won me that game as well. So Super Poly was really clutch versus every PK player I played against. And then in top eight, I played against the Kitchen Sink deck uh, and I 2-0'd that match as well. This is the one where Dogwood game two just got me to 24,000 life points. Um, 
yeah, seals tidying just sometimes is an FTK, and that's sort of how that game went. But yeah, that sort of wraps it up for matchups uh, and how everything went. It was a really fun time, and it was just a good tournament overall. We did end up all of the top four was our friends from Shreveport. So we just sort of took the prizing and ran with it, and it was a great time. But yeah, this has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Hope you enjoyed the profile. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Bye, YouTube.